is working. That says it's working. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Oh, all these people coming in late. Good job. I'm not here. So we're recording. Okay. Um, if anyone else jumps in, they may get a little bit late. So welcome once again, as I said, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to join me for a little while for my presentation today. Um, I'm so thrilled to have you all here. I'm so delighted that you've come to join me. And what I'm going to do without further ado is I'm going to try and share my screen. So there we go. I'm going to hit share. Right, perfect. Um, let's get rid of that. There we go. I know, let's see if I can get that. Can I hit that? There we go. Can we see that? Yeah, perfect, brilliant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and, um, I can't get rid of, how do I get rid of? There we go. Um, unfortunately, because I've got you here, I'm gonna try and just move you if I can. My cursor seems to have disappeared for some reason. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay, so our presentation today, metaphysical principles to help you win the game of life. This might be a little bit tricky because I've got you all on my screen and I can't see my cursor. Um, so I'm not going to be able to. All right, we'll crack on and hopefully I can see my screen. If not, I might have to try something a little bit different, but there we go. This is the way these things go sometimes. So I'm gonna run through a little bit of housekeeping here for you. Um, I've got all my notes here, so I will be referring to these. I've got lots of notes, I've got a lot of information I wanna give you, so don't be put off by that. Um, but ultimately, I want you to read what comes up on the screen. I want you to check out the pictures and um, just take on board what's going. As I said, this is being recorded, so you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. You will all get a recording of this. So let's check and see what we've got today. So um, as I said, be aware this masterclass is being recorded. So if you don't want to appear on it, please turn off your video if you can. Um, Keep muted throughout, please, um, so there's no background noise or feedback um, uh, on the presentation. Um, that is uh, going to be off-putting for all of us. So if we can keep muted, I'll be much appreciative, please. And um, we're going to have some time at the end of the presentation for Q&A, so keep your questions for them. Um, you can type them in the chat box if you want, but obviously, because I'm sharing my screen, I won't see them, so I'll have to go back to the chat box to refer to them. But if you can... Uh, uh, just make a note of them and keep them um, and try not to draw on my screen either. I'll be much appreciated. <laughs> Whoever's done that, I'm going to come for you. Um, and understand we're all at different stages on this journey. Um, and a question or a point you may have may feel that it's silly or irrelevant for you, but it will have value for others. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay, there will be time at the end for you to ask questions. All right, most of all, please, please, please enjoy the experience. All right, we're here to have some fun. We're here to go through some concepts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, most of all, we want to enjoy the experience because remember, the rising tide lifts all ships. So let's keep the energy high um, and let's vibrate at a really high level, shall we? Okay, perfect. Well, look, this is not a right said Fred tribute band. This is actually my good self with one of my clients at an event a couple of years ago. And usually it's traditional on these uh, 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 presentations to say a little bit about yourself. And I don't really want to do that because most of you know me. And if you don't, um, you will find out about me as we go through this. But I'm just going to say this, that I've been coaching now for over 30 years, uh, 31 years to be exact. It will be 32 years in April this year and um, I've been teaching these metaphysical principles all across the world to all different types of people from all different uh, cultures, different religions, um, genders, so on and so forth. But the one thing that we've tried to do all the time with this is help people express their full power, their full potential, raising their consciousness, raising their conscious awareness and in turn that of the entire planet because it only ever takes one person with one voice and one idea to actually um, change a world um, as has been proven throughout time. So that is um, what I'm gonna say there in regards to myself. That would be a good band, by the way, I'm telling you that now. Um, okay, 
I want to start by bringing you a quote, a quote from one of my favourite um, mystics of time immemorial, uh, the 13th century Sufi poet and mystic Rumi. And Rumi said that there is a voice um, that doesn't use words, listen. Um, and this is referencing that intuitive voice within that we all have, that we all um, forget to listen to. Uh, we're very bad these days at thinking ourselves into and out of things and we lose that internal intuitive voice. We have this habit uh, of ignoring this intuition in favour of linear, logical, uh, horizontal thinking. You know, the thinking that goes A plus B plus C plus D. Um, and um, unfortunately, as you're going to discover over the next 40 minutes or so, that's pretty much the wrong way to think. I've got a note here that says, we must get past our programming, which has us thinking in this horizontal way. Now, there was a chap some 3,000 years ago, Solomon, uh, the most wise and powerful of all. And he said, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Mm. Above all else, guard your heart, for is it it is the wellspring of life. Now notice that um, he says above all else. He doesn't say eh, when you feel like it. He doesn't say if you get round to it or it may be a good idea. He said above all else. Um, you have to make this your top priority. Your top priority. Um, he calls it the wellspring of life. And that's a very interesting statement. And I've got a note here as well about research conducted recently by the Heart Math Institute that corroborates just how accurate Solomon here was talking when he was talking about the importance of going to the heart. Um, not only does the heart give off an electromagnetic field 5,000 times more powerful than the brain, but it also has its own neurons, which means it thinks. But it also thinks much more quickly than the brain. So before your conscious mind has made an assumption, become aware of, or made a decision, the heart's already there. It's already done its work. This is why we have to listen to this voice that doesn't use words. Rumi from throughout the from throughout the ages, perfect, wonderful. All right, the definition of metaphysics. Now, as I say, I've got uh, uh, you all down one side here. I may have to come out of this particular uh, way of sharing the screen to move you out of the way, um, but we'll see how we go, shall we? Um, so. Uh, the goal of all metaphysical study is to be a truly connected person, one who is inwardly aware and outwardly successful. Okay, that makes perfectly sense. We're going to go inward. Metaphysics is the study of all things that aren't solid, right? So the majority of the universe. So physics studies the material things. Metaphysics studies the non-material. The non-material make up at least 95% of all the universe. So, in that regard, it's a very important subject to study. It's a very important concept to go inward and be aware to help you become outwardly successful. However, the real truth behind how that is achieved and the results that follow are much misunderstood and abused today. Okay, the truth has been watered down. Um, it's basically what we call spirituality 101, right? Um, this masterclass, the one we're on now, has been designed to help you understand that real truth. Um, we're going to talk about this in different sections, and then you're going to get to apply it immediately into your lives, should you choose. And it's always up to you. Uh, you know, we can be partake to all this information. We can get the best information in the world. But if we choose to not use it, then we've got a problem. Okay, uh, there we go on. 
discovering one's ultimate self reality is what we're going to attempt to do. So that is the relationship of man, the relationship of woman, the relationship of mind and the universe, which we are all in. Sounds like a big order, but actually it's very, very simple. Do not be fooled by the simplicity of this. Okay. Um, we're going to discover if there's a supreme universal intelligence that resides in the deeper levels of the human mind. Now, this is called in metaphysical terms, God. You can call it what you like, right? Do not get caught up on the name. In fact, you see here, I've got my Taoist t-shirt on. In the Tao, it has no name. They say that naming this supreme universal intelligence proves you do not know this supreme universal intelligence. But our linear horizontal thinking that we thought or that we spoke of just a moment ago would have us being able to define it. So call it what you want. Call it God. Call it supreme universal intelligence. Call it higher self. I don't mind. I don't care. That's irrelevant. But we're going to discover if there is that there that resides deep within us. And then we're going to make direct contact with it. And we're going to bring it forth into our conscious mind and ultimately into our surface daily life um, to improve our life through the application of these metaphysical principles. OK. All right. Oh, how, Paul, are we going to do this then? I hear you ask. And this is where we could go all wobbly. So. How do we win the game of life using these metaphysical principles? All right. Now, I've got some bullet points here that I'm going to run through uh, so we can have a little chat about this. Um, I'm also going to bring you a bit of science as well, because there are people that like the more spiritual side of things. But there are also people that like the hardcore science. So I will obviously um, try and make sure that you get both of them as we go along. So we serve everyone here. Um, understand this, though. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about the quantum model of reality. So we're going to go into a little bit of hardcore science, but I'm going to keep it very minimal. All right. Um, nothing um, that happens in our reality is caused by anything. It all works off its own volition. Right. Um, and everything happens spontaneously. So all phenomena that we see around us uh, is at the automatic consequence of something called the quantum field. Now, this quantum field um, is uh, infinite, invisible, omnipotent, um, and all-encompassing. There is no place that it isn't, yet it doesn't uh, 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 exist in space-time. It's non-local, all right? Um, it's like, um, think of it like a wibbly-wobbly um, giant electromagnetic field of unimaginable power and scope. Um, we can't conceive it really, uh, except as a concept. We have no way of uh, knowing it, no way of understanding it, except mathematically and through just concepts like, yeah, it's big, it's powerful, blah, blah, blah. Um, but understand that it's also very subtle. It's also very gentle, um, as well as being exquisitely beautiful and powerful. All right. Um, and from this field, all potentialities which exist, Every potential outcome exists as a probability. It's a field of probabilities. Um, these potentialities are activated by the field itself through intention, conscious observation and intention into actualities. Right? So everything that we see and interact with, including ourselves, comes from this field. Right? Um, what we consider to be evolution, the unfolding of things, the creating of new and wondrous things more advanced than before, is actually an ongoing creation of this field. Right? So the creationists and the evolutionists are both correct. Right? And they're both wrong because they're getting it slightly mixed up. Um, the field is so powerful so incredibly in tune with things that if you as a human being holds a thought with intention and enough emotion and feeling that thought thought has to come to be 
It's how this quantum model of reality works. You are the conscious observer that is creating the reality that you are experiencing, but you're also part of the unfolding of the universal mind, the higher self, God, whatever as well. So you are creating everything you're in and creating your experience in it at the same time. You are the knowing and the knower, the observer and the observed, the experience and the experiencing. And if that doesn't blow your mind, whew, I don't know what will. Uh, there is no separate self. How about that? Let's go with that, shall we? So, everything is connected. How do we win using this game of life? All right, let's have a look at these principles, shall we? Meditation is one. We're going to meditate. Not tonight, but we're going to add it to our list of daily practices. Now, don't worry too much about these. I'm going to go into these in more detail as we go through. We're going to establish and maintain what we call a positive transcendent attitude. Now, don't worry too much about these words because um, obviously what's going to happen is I might be able to just. No, that's wrong. I don't know what's going on there. Um, these are metaphysical um, terms, which I will explain as we go through it. OK. Um, oh, hold on. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. We are going to master our weaknesses. Yep, we all have them. They're all there. Um, and we're going to master them today. We're going to practice mind magnetism. Our mind is our master power and is a magnet. And we're going to practice that in this um, class tonight. And we're going to take action. Ooh, the one everyone doesn't like, but we're going to do it. Okay. Um, and lastly, got a little bonus principle for you that you're going to have to wait till the end to get. So make sure you're on to the end to get that. Okay. All right. Let's dive in to mystical meditation. Um, whew, now, why is this so important? Well, we all know of meditation these days. It's been around for quite some time in the West and it's been around since time immemorial in the East. But it won't surprise you to know that the practice of meditation in the East is very different from the practice of meditation in the West. In fact, although there are many different types of meditation that are incredibly effective, and I'm going to give you some research on mindfulness in just a moment, um, I want you to understand that most meditation is a bastardized, watered down version of what actual meditation is. And the meditation that I'm going to go through with you today, I'm going to explain, is very simple, but highly effective. OK, um, so understand just this in the East. If you want to explore your conscious connection to your higher self, you can go to a monastery, you can go to an ashram. And you can meditate for hours every day, 12 to 16 hours per day. In exchange for board and food, you commit to work on the upkeep of the place you are staying in. And it works very, very well. So there are hardened meditators who have been doing this for decades. And there is some great research that if you care to look for, you can find um, which take these monks and these um, sages and do all sorts of brain scans, functional MRI, live brain scans on them while they're meditating. And the research is insane, absolutely insane. But that's in the East. In the West, we can't do that. We have a lifestyle that doesn't allow for that. And it would be churlish of us to try and do it and irresponsible. We have jobs, we have families, we have roles, we have societies and communities to upkeep so we need to come up with a different way and this is why there are watered down versions and versions that have been adapted for use in the west we're going to talk about one of those in just a moment um, now meditation sometimes gets a bad rap because people assume that the one thing that meditation is for is to stop thinking and that's just not so you cannot um, stop thinking. Um, it just doesn't happen. Uh, even the hardened meditators of the East, those that have been meditating for 30 or 40 years, can't stop their thoughts. What they can do is they can create a gap between them. Now, remember when we spoke just a moment ago about the quantum field and how that field is a field of immense power and potential but it sits outside of space time. There is no time. There is no space. There is only the now. 
the infinite present moment. So if you can get a gap between your thoughts, that gap of one second, two seconds, three seconds to the quantum field, to the higher self, to the God mind within is an eternity. And it can download information like you wouldn't believe should you be in tune with it. So that's what you go for when you meditate. You go inward, you come away from sensor, senses, and you start to use the power and the energy that you would put through your senses to turn inward and connect with that higher self. Very, very simple, um, but don't worry about stopping thinking. You cannot control that. You know, these thoughts will come, they will go. You've just got to get used to letting them go and finding that gap. Um, and this is why um, it's important that you you've practice um, and start very slowly. If you're a hardened meditator, fine. But if you're new to meditating, a couple of minutes a day, five minutes here, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, build it up. Um, usually when I was taught this, um, it was recommended 20 to 30 minutes, two times a day was the uh, uh, optimal you were aiming for, but you can start wherever you feel comfortable. Okay. There is no right and wrong way. There is just your way. All right. Um, when you start, What tends to happen is you go into a state what neuroscientists call relaxed alertness. Now, this is not somewhere, no, not a, um, a place where most people are used to. Most people are used to being awake and asleep. And to go into a place of where you slow down your brain waves and become relaxed but alert, what tends to happen when people start meditating is they fall asleep because they're not used to relaxing in this way, which is why it is recommended that you can do this meditation seated or laying down, but I would always recommend until we get used to it to start from a seated position. All right. Um, and as I said, your research shows clearly that people who meditate consistently, and there's the word consistently for just a few minutes a day, um, develop an increasing density in the folding of the outer layers of the brain. Now this area is known as uh, jiri, I think, and this increased jirification helps you quieten down the emotional center of the brain, the prefrontal cortex. So it gives you that gap. It gives you the ability to find that um, um, gap that, that helps you pause in this modern world. What Viktor Frankl called um, between stimulus and response is a gap. And this is exactly what he was talking about in his research and what modern neuroscience shows as well. Um, there was also some great research done by a doctor, Amishi Jha, who worked with the US Marines. And she worked with them eight weeks before they were deployed in um, battle, in combat. Um, and she's an associate uh, psychologist, I think, at um, University of Miami. And she had them doing, so she had two groups of Marines. One group was the control group. They didn't meditate. One group were the meditating group, 12 minutes of mindfulness. She took them through mindfulness practice uh, per day. When they went eight weeks later into combat, the meditating group uh, slept better, had less anxiety, had lower blood pressure, um, were more focused, made better decisions in combat, and were that much, uh, um, overall, their performance was increased. It sounds weird talking about performance with a soldier when they're fighting, but that's how they worded it in the study. Um, it made such a difference from the control group that the Marines in the control group asked uh, the doctor if they could start meditating while they were in battle. And although um, Dr. Jar uh, thought it would have no... Um, um, benefit because they were in a, a really stressful situation they were fighting um, actually just starting the meditation there made a massive difference to their levels of anxiety and sleep um, so um, proven in battle the meditation even a small amount of meditation has incredible benefits and if it can benefit a soldier who's in combat who is trained for that imagine what it can do for us so let's have a quick look at how to practice metaphysical meditation shall we all right so all uh, right this is going to cause me a little bit of an issue i might have to um come out of here just a sec hold on one sec let me just do this let me see if i can do this here right there we go all right now let me go back into this there we go rocking and rolling all right so uh 
The following steps are used to simply withdraw the five senses and the mind from their attention to the world outside. This is what we spoke of a moment ago. And to make contact with the inner mental world of one's own mind, one's higher mind. So you want to pick a place in your home when there's the least likelihood of your being disturbed. Um, you can practice the meditation sitting up, which is preferred to begin with, or laying down. If you sit, have both feet flat on the floor. Um, hands resting, palms up on your lap, body erect and comfortable. If you lay down, cross your ankles. You want a circuit here, right? Uh, fold your hands and place them over the central upper part of the body. Don't put them over your stomach. And try to arrange it so that your head is to the north and your feet to the south if you can, uh, because that lines you with the Earth's magnetic field, apparently. Um, and use the same place to meditate every single day. Make sure the temperature in the room is between 21 to 23 degrees Celsius for us here in the UK. If you are uh, abroad and do Fahrenheit, 72 to 78, I think. Um, wear loose fitting, comfortable clothing. Don't wear anything tight, but don't meditate hungry or immediately after a meal when you're digesting. Uh, now, here we go. Get a single white candle, place it in front of you and turn it on, Lip it, light it. For between approximately five to 10 minutes, stare at the flame. Then close your physical eyes. Now you should see an after image of the candle flame on the interior region of your forehead, which is known as your third eye. This is what you're gonna focus on, okay? You're gonna breathe nice and slowly, deeply in your belly, and you're just gonna look, inverted commas, at this after image and it may last for a moment it may last for not longer but focus on the image you see using this as an inner focal point of concentration okay now that concentration is what's going to still your mind and give you that gap that we're looking for and it will free you from the outer daily life thinking making you more aware of this internal consciousness of your mind. And that is it. That is all you have to do. It's not any more difficult than this. As I said, if you want to start with two minutes, start with two minutes. Look at the candle for one minute, close your eyes for one minute, okay? And build from there. You can get apps that have chimes that you can set up for time. So I, I go for 25 minutes, I think, at the moment. So I have a 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute, chime so i have a chime to start a chime for 10 minutes and then the next chime is at the end so i know when i can close my eyes okay but you don't have to time yourself you can do it approximately you can just stare for a few moments close your eyes for a few moments and away you go but that's what you're trying to do you're just trying to um, focus on this inner point of concentration get that gap and let the higher self do what needs to be done Okay, that's it. You don't have to force it. It happens automatically for you. It is as simple as that. Okay. Right. So that is our meditation practice. Really simple. I told you this is going to be very simple. But now we're going to talk about establishing and maintaining a positive transcendent attitude. Um, Master mystic Jesus said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Um, which basically... We can modernize that and say what you believe about yourself is reflected in the attitude you display as you go about your daily activities. So a negative attitude is brought about via a pessimistic opinion of your life and of life in general. A positive attitude has as its foundation faith or a belief in the inherent good of life. Now understand this. Negativity represses, positivity expresses. I'm reminded of a quote from a wonderful teacher called Wayne Dyer, who said, loving people live in a loving world. Hostile people live in a hostile world. Same world. Okay. Um, so where does this positive transcendent attitude come from? Um, it comes basically from seeing things as they actually are. And that's all transcendent means. It's seeing things as they are, understanding the true nature of life and being. So this attitude that we carry within us is stimulating our responses, both inwardly and outwardly. And this is really, really important because 
Outwardly, it's how we respond to others' behaviours and situations to ourselves. And inwardly, from the belief systems and the stories that run around in our subconscious consistently. This is why we have to go within to affect the without. All right. So you cannot, as an aside, you cannot affect other people's behaviors towards you, but you can affect how you see their behavior towards you. And that will indirectly affect how they deal with you, how they behave towards you. All right. So to live a desired and winning life, because that's what we're here for, our daily attitude needs to be one of positive transcendence. This attitude knows uh, that in spite of the way things currently look, when we connect with this higher self within, we're going to be shown the way to grow and improve um, any circumstance, right? And it doesn't matter where we start from, right? As long as we align with these principles, um, our current circumstances bear no relation to future possibilities. No relation whatsoever. It doesn't matter where you start from. You can improve beyond all recognition if you establish and maintain a positive transcendent attitude. So let's run through some steps for living this positive transcendent attitude. I'm going to run through five steps here. Number one, understand that all obstacles are temporal, temporary, and you have access to a power that transcends the temporary limitations of time and space, giving you the solution you seek all right know that there are universal principles or laws at work that once aligned with bring success to you each and every time there are laws of the universe that are always in effect law of gravity is one that springs to mind if you step off a step you're going to hit the floor every single time whether you understand it whether you know about it whether you care to know about it or whether you disagree with it it doesn't matter it works every simple time. There are metaphysical laws at work as well. You may know one, law of attraction. There are others, law of cause and effect, law of perpetual transmutation of energy. We're not going to go into those today, but they are there. They are working to bring you success each and every time as long as you align with them. And that's what these metaphysical principles will enable you to do. All right, realize that your life However you feel motivated to live it has meaning and purpose. We all follow our own drumbeat, right? So it doesn't matter what you want out of life, it is valuable and it has meaning and it has purpose. If it's truly you, then go for it and feel motivated to live it, okay? Know that in the event of ill health, very topical, the higher self within has power over any malfunctioning energies in the body to heal them and restore them to optimal health. Now, I put this in because of what's going on right now. And I'm referring you to the work of people such as Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, and uh, others of such, you know, Dr. Dawson Church, um, who have done a lot of work on the realigning of critically ill people through the power of meditation. Go and research their work uh, for more on this. Um, but um, our default state is one of balance, it's one of health, it's one of wellness, and as you'll see from this one, it's one of um, abundance, all right? And we are always being nudged towards that. All right? Most of us resist that. But realise that in the event of temporary financial lack, again, quite topical at the moment, the higher self within, that quantum field with which we're connected to, is unlimited in its resources because it's a field of potentiality, limitless potentiality. All possible outcomes exist in it now. So this higher self will direct the personal or conscious mind <clears throat> to those infinite resources in our physical reality. So all we have to do is understand these. And then as we go through the rest of the program you'll see how these all work all right let's crack on so we're going to master our weaknesses oh, i love this photo and it's such a great photo um i want you to understand something right success is natural it's a natural part of life nature um 
uh, utilizes these principles so effectively. And this is why I love the Tao Te Ching so much because it utilizes so many natural examples. Water, running water is one of them. Uh, nature is constantly moving herself towards an unfolding state of perfection. And as we are part of that natural world, we are part of that perfection, whether you like to admit it or not, whether you care to admit it or not, it's just the fact. Um, but we are in a more evolved state than most other kingdoms in the universe, as far as we know. So we have the ability to unfold in a, in a kind of co-creative way, um, a co-creative capacity. The problem is we're constantly bombarded with ideals and information about how that unfolding has to look. And if we don't agree or achieve it, we are made to feel in some way, somehow, some shape, not good enough. And that's a huge problem that we face today because as we said, everything comes out of this field, this incredible field of potentiality. Everything, all these ideals that we're being sought, all these ideas we have contain an energy. And these habit patterns of weaknesses um, are formed from this energy. And like all energy, they have a degree of power, right? And that power can take a grip on the mind and the nervous system. Now, without going too deeply into the mental side of it, because this isn't the form for it tonight, the body is the manifestation, you could say, of the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind expresses itself through the nervous system via the only mechanism it can in the physical world, the body. Right? Um, so what we think subconsciously causes us to act in ways that can be against our better judgment or that are self-defeating what we'd call here our weakness all right so the best practice to overcome this well in metaphysical parlance it's known as a face-to-face -face confrontation between the power or of this weakness energy in the mind and the unlimited universal god power within um, so let's see how this confrontation works, shall we? And, and for full disclosure, I learned this off of Dr. Paul Masters of the University of Metaphysics. It's a very powerful, very simple um, technique. Um, but prior to practicing it, um, a positive mental attitude that we spoke of before containing the following three ingredients will ensure your success okay so one you must actually want to change you'd be amazed at how many people don't they're just happy to stay where they are two you must truly want to succeed and be happy so you must understand and know intimately what success means to you and what it means for you to be happy and three and here's the biggie you must honestly believe that no temporal energy of your mind can stand up to the eternal energy of the God power at the center of your mind. Okay, so let's have a look at this confrontation technique, shall we? Right. We're going to use this as an example, a weight issue, because it's really easy to imagine for everyone. Uh, and apart from, I, the, I referenced uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Dawson Church, Dr. Joe Dispenza earlier, um, because I say here that a negative weakness is controlling your mind and central nervous system, causing you to crave more food than is healthy to eat. Now, there are medical conditions that would lead to uh, someone having a weight issue, but the medical conditions actually are quite rare and not as um, uh, common as people would have you believe. Indeed, the work of... Um, Bruce Lipton would suggest, he, he's an expert in epigenetics, that genetically we suffer from between one to 5% of the time and everything else is a lifestyle issue, right? So um, I just mentioned that to, to, to make that clear, right? So here's the thing. So whenever you feel negative energy trying to take over, you need to go into direct confrontation with it. And you do that by affirming the following loudly the god power or whatever you want to call it within me is greater than the power 
causing me to overeat in this example. I yield my mind and my body to the God power within me that brings peace to my mind and body. So you have a conversation with yourself, right? And I want to just mention a word here, yield. Yield along with surrender has really negative connotations in today's marketplace let's call it in today's society but to yield and surrender to a higher power takes uh, uh, to yield and surrender to truth to a different way to a new way to a, a, a way that everyone else walks away from or doesn't understand or poo poos takes strength takes power takes passion takes the warrior within to do it's a place of strength a place of love unconditionally and strength so never shield away from yielding or surrendering to a higher power within notice that it's within you you're not giving your power to anyone or anything outside of yourself it's always to within that's a very important distinction now as you do this Try to feel that greater power within. So you might need to repeat the affirmation until you feel stronger, you feel more powerful. Hold this feeling until you no longer sense any influence from the weakness energy. So until you don't do what you were going to do. So if we're talking about a weight issue here, maybe you were on your way to get some crisps or chocolate out the cupboard and you say your affirmation and you repeat it and you start to feel powerful and you start to feel in control. You turn around, you go and sit down, maybe taking an apple or a glass of water with you. Then you say the following, I give thanks for the God power or whatever of my mind for giving me self mastery. So you praise yourself for your efforts. Now, Again, it takes practice. It's not something that you do once. You do it over and over and over again until you have yielded to that power within that seeks balance, harmony, health, wellness, and abundance at all times. Um, you can use this in any way, shape, or form. Um, I had a client, we used this exact technique because he couldn't get um, past the interview stage um, in trying to get a job a few years ago, about four years ago, we used this the first interview he went with. He said his affirmation before he went into the interview. He said it over and over again. He felt that power within, went in, smashed the interview, got the job. It really, really works. And it always starts with these words. The God power or whatever within me is greater than whatever it is, the situation Continue repeating and attempt to feel the God power of your mind take over. After you have felt or seen the positive results, you give thanks for self mastery. Okay, as simple as that. Right then, aha, mind magnetism. Well, we're cracking on, nearly done. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, now, one of the main reasons to use meditation um, is to quickly realize that your physical brain is merely a vehicle used by your true mind, uh, which is no more than an infinite field, as we said, of unimaginable power and energy, which in metaphysics we refer to as God, but in um, science is referred to the quantum field. Right? Um, all the conditions and situations that you face in your life are also fields of energy. Right? but they're all manifestations of this one source life then is an exchange of energies and that's why the law of uh, perpetual transmutation of energy is so important to understand but as i say i will do a master class on them at some point so what metaphysics teaches us is that the energies of the mind are on different wavelengths or frequencies much like um separate radio stations and you tune into separate radio stations and you get separate stations when you do but it doesn't mean that the other frequencies and the other stations aren't there you're just tuned out of them your mind tunes in and out of these frequencies all the time um, so we attract to ourselves in physical material form that which we are emoting or thinking on on a mental level and emotion plays an important part here as well as the mental side of it um, we will attract telepathically whatever we spend most of our time um, thinking about. So 
um, if you think positively, you'll attract positive situations. If you think negatively, uh, you will attract the opposite, the negative of it, because this is a universe of no exclusion. Whatever you are thinking, you experience. All right. Um, this is a cornerstone of metaphysical teaching. And all teachers and sages and mystics down the ages have disagreed on stuff, countless bits and bobs, but have all agreed on one thing. And that thing is you become what you think about most of the time. So what you have in your mind most of the time is what tends to show up. And you think you're thinking about it because it's in front of you, but actually you're creating the experience because you're thinking about it. All right. So how do we practice positive mind magnetism? We maintain a positive mental attitude, practice more conscious awareness throughout the day during all your activities. See, meditation can be doing anything. Be present, be mindful, be alert, be conscious. Uh, neuroscience suggests we are only consciously aware 5% of the day. So we need to practice more conscious awareness. Do not accept a negative condition. Very difficult at the moment, but look at it as a test. Never see a negative condition as reality. React immediately with a positive constructive thought on how to improve the condition. This activates the law of polarity because if there's an obstacle in front of you because of the wonderful law of polarity, also known as the law of duality, um, if one uh, obstacle exists, the way round it has to exist at the same time or it can't exist. If there's a question, the answer has to exist or it's not a question, it's a statement. Um, so that's how that law works. So look for those obstacles, look for those questions, look for those problems because the solution is there. And if you start solving them, if you start answering them, if you start moving around them, you start to progress very, very quickly. Very difficult one. Do not speak negatively. What you think, feel, speak believe and how you act all have to align you cannot think one thing and say something else you cannot act in one way and speak another way you have to come from that positive attitude remember positivity expresses negativity represses live act and above all think and feel like a person who already has that which is desired this attitude builds an irresistible mental telepathic magnetism in your mind that will more readily draw you to that which you desire neville spoke of it in the following way i think he said um, see yourself in possession of the conditions you wish to experience or something like that uh, what is more known in um, personal development these days as start with the end in mind so you have to believe you have it. You have to act as if you have it. You have to think as if you have it. You have to feel like you've got it before you'll get it. That is the way the universe works, I'm afraid. And take time each day to practice this deep meditation we've gone through. Nothing creates a greater magnetic mental force than allowing the higher God consciousness to flow through your mind daily. You are the vessel through which everything happens. Get yourself out the way and allow it to flow through. And there is nothing, nothing you cannot do. And talking about that, we're going to go into action. Because the only thing preventing you from taking action on an idea or a dream is self-doubt. Um, when you take action, you're acting on faith. Whether it's you, me or Elon Musk, you're taking a step of faith. And St. Paul described faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is described in the diary as belief in the not yet seen, which incidentally is what fear is described as as well. Um, those that take action have a belief in something within themselves, maybe a certain something extra that everyone possesses, um, that enables them to take a risk, that enables them to take a chance. And there are no exceptions to this principle, no matter what current circumstances in your life would seem to indicate. You know, if you can put aside all uncertainty and doubt, it, it never truly goes. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been doing this a long, long time, and I've worked with a lot of people, and there's still doubt, there's still worry, there's still fear, there's still what-ifs but you have to take that leap of faith. You don't want to get to the end of your life and have your music still inside you. You need to look past current circumstances. And only then 
you have a better chance of realizing your desired outcome and tapping into that something extra. That fear, that faith opens up the floodgates for this higher self to flow through you, releasing previously unrealized energy and power and helping you move towards your desired outcome. And it can start very simply by just doing one thing a day, one small thing a day. Um, but you, you, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of this truth, right? Um, there are two selves inside of us. One is the temporary self. Now this temporary self looks at the conditions that it's in and thinks that that's its permanent state, right? And that cannot be further from the truth. This temporary self has been created by the conditioning and programming of society and more often than not has a limited appreciation of itself or its actual possibilities. And we listen to this self an awful lot, right? Now the other is the real self. It's that spark of life that not only created you, not only causes you to have existence, but flows through you and creates the experience you're having whilst you're having it. What you have to do is get out of the way, right? That's your, that's your role, to get out of the way. So how do you do that? What are the action guidelines we need to take care of? I want to bring you one more quote, uh, a quote by Benjamin Disraeli, brilliant quote that goes, action may not always bring happiness, but there is no happiness without action. Let me repeat that. Action may not always bring happiness, but there is no happiness without action. That alone should stir you into action. So let's have a look at this action guideline. Right, here we go. Physical realities come forth as a result of your thinking. So as you, as you have an idea or inspiration, immediately say to yourself, my higher mind puts this into action immediately. Okay, even if you just write it down or record it onto a voice app, right? Show that you are an action taker. Show yourself, show your higher self, show everyone else. Right? doesn't matter if you do not action that idea. You can keep it for later, you can action it yourself, or you can give it to someone else. But start making a note of it and start calling yourself an action taker. It's very, very important. Now, doubt in yourself is the only thing that holds you back from taking action. Realize and constantly reaffirm that the same higher mind that created the idea, you don't create the idea, all the information that ever existed exists now and will exist is here already outside of space-time in that quantum field right everything you tap into it and bring the idea back with you so that same higher mind that created the idea stands ready to help you succeed it if you get yourself and your doubts and your stories and your beliefs out of the way now a person who takes action does so out of faith no matter who you are action always requires a leap of faith this faith, though, is not in yourself, but in your higher self, which is always more than equal to the task. As I say, you are the conduit through which action happens. Whatever you truly believe to be real in life is reality. Okay? Each day, tell yourself, reality is success and happiness in my life made possible by my higher mind. There's a lot of quotes around the concept that the world is an illusion. Um, and I understand that quote, but you have to look at it. It was said by Sri um, Maharshi Ramana, I think, who was a very enlightened sage. And for him at his level, everything was, um, you know, not real, was an illusion. From us at our level, it's real. It's as real as we see it. Right. So don't get too caught up in that. Just understand that no matter where you are right now, you can improve no matter what's going on. You can create your own economy. You can create your own environment. You can create your own health. You can create your own lifestyle, no matter what everyone else is doing. OK, very important that we all get that. And in the laws of nature and the scheme of the universe, you exist to succeed. You are not inconsequential. OK, this is really important. The rising tide lifts all ships, right? Whatever action you take sets up a chain reaction around the world, well, throughout the universe, to be honest with you. You are valuable to life. You wouldn't be here otherwise. You've already won. The odds on you being here right now 
listening to this with me on these devices is being estimated at some 400 trillion to one. You've already beaten the bank. You've already won the odds. Just go out and crack on, okay? Um, and that's pretty much our presentation, except we have a bonus. Um, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about this Chinese lady and these water buckets. Uh, and bear in mind that this is our bonus um, uh, content, all right? Our bonus principle. So this elderly Chinese lady, every day, treks down to the stream past her home and then back to supply her family with fresh water. In order to do this, she fashioned these two big heavy pots that you see at the end of the poles. One of the pots was in perfect condition and always delivered a full portion of water. The other had a deep crack in it, causing water to leak out. At the end of the long walk, the cracked pot arrived only half full of water. This situation went on for two years, with the woman bringing home only one and a half pots of water. Of course, the perfect pot was very proud of its accomplishments, but the cracked pot was ashamed of its imperfection and miserable that it only could do half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be bitter failure, the cracked pot spoke to the woman by the stream. I am ashamed, it said. This crack in my side causes water to leak out. You work so hard and yet have little water from me once you return home. The old woman smiled and replied, did you notice that there are flowers on your side of the path. I have always known about your floor, so I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. Every day when we walk back home, you watered those seeds and helped them to grow. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table and give to our neighbors. Without you being just the way you are, there would not have been this special beauty to grace our homes and lives. Our bonus principle is be you. You are not broken, imperfect, or need fixing. You are a unique expression of consciousness, unfolding and experiencing itself right here, right now, in this space and time location. As I said, you are knowledge knowing itself. You are the observer observing itself. You are consciousness being conscious. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But you are valuable and you are needed and desired. And get on and make it so. So let me just stop the share. There we go. We go back there. Whoa. Well, that, peeps, is the presentation today. I hope that you got all that. I hope you understood all that. You will get the video of it, of course. And I just want to open up the platform for yourselves. Um, as I say, we've got a few moments. Um, any questions, any comments, any points of order that you'd like to say? Um, I've got, I can't see everyone, so let me just flick you through to the gallery view. Uh, there we go, so we can see everyone. All right, so if there's anyone that wants to say anything, now's the time. If not, that's absolutely fine, you don't have to. Um, I don't mind anyway. Okay, so Janine, um, let me unmute you. You should un be able to unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, hi, Pav. Hi, Janine, how are you doing? So good to I'm see you. I'm fine, thank you, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna have to turn my sound up. I'll just that's better. I can hear you better now. Um, it's not a question, it was just uh, the meditation with the candle. Mm -hmm. um, I've, the only time I do meditations is really uh, when I'm listening to a sleep meditation or something like that. I find it really difficult um, to clear my mind and just be. And I think that's like you said, we're either asleep or we're busy. Mm -hmm. So we're never in that sort of relaxed state. So the, um, the, the watching the candle before you 
just do a couple of minutes of meditation sounds really interesting to me so um it's not a question i was just like thinking that's um i've never been told that before and i've been on lots of courses and i've studied sort of coaching and all sorts of things but um so i'm going to try that so thank you for that that's no problem but can you let me know how that goes yeah yeah for a little while a week or two and then and let me know how you get on with that yeah i've got um a few really big decisions i need to make around business okay and um my mind is just um overloaded with fear you know so like you were saying then maybe the answers will come and i think at the moment um there's so much fear it's just clouding yeah. my decision making i'm just um what's the word um you know when you um i'm so fearful that i'm not doing anything i'm just like um you're, you're almost paralyzed by the yes fear. yeah paralyzed yeah frozen right. with fear right. to make a decision so i'm just thinking would that be helpful for that type of thing it might well be if you give the decision over to your higher self right what yes. we try and do is we get paralyzed in our thinking right so we think we're in charge we think we have all the answers and and what happens is we we shut down the 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 super conscious if you like the, our ability to connect with our higher self the quantum field where all these answers are because if you're asking the question the answer has to be there so you need to ask the question and then get out of the way right? yeah ask the question go into what i would do i would sit in front of the candle i would ask the question and then I would just quieten down, right? And it might not come straight away. And it might not come in the way you think it will come as a direct insight. Yeah. You might hear a conversation in the supermarket and think, that's a wonderful idea. Or you might flick up, open a book, and it might be in there. Or you might see someone walking down the road and say hi, and they might ask you something, and it might trigger another response. It will come to you. You have to be consciously aware and open for it. Yeah. And my- Janine, um, I actually made a massive decision for work um, after starting meditation in September. And mm. that's what finally cleared my headspace. And I was, I'm still shit scared. You know, I've let go of a job in Corona time and still decided to take this risk on myself to go into myself. But it's all, I've wanted to do it for years, but it, nothing seemed to push me. And ironically, it took this to push me because I went into myself this year because I finally had time. But I started by doing the Wim Hof breathing, for example. And then once I got comfortable with that, I then applied that to certain guided meditations. And then through those guided meditations, it was like I could unblock certain areas of my mind. And then I just make a decision. And I just... I just knew after, and then I did this yoga session, applied the breathing with the meditation. And at the end of the session, I I stood up to uh, my friend and I was like, I'm going to resign. I know exactly what I need to, and I can't explain this fire in my belly. And and it Mm. just finds all sort of, and my ideas every night, like sometimes I don't sleep because I've got so many ideas. It overwhelms me. But the fear in me, which you was talking about today, Paul, sorry um was the the fear in me keeps trying to go back to those who the fuck am i trying to do something like this Mm -hmm. in this time and i keep getting pulled back and then pulled forwards where it's so that's what i'm trying to overcome so i think now what you've told me tonight i'm now going to apply because i haven't tried meditating with nothing so yeah. I'm intrigued now. To, but how would you say to sit? Because I couldn't understand what you were trying to say. Sitting with so, our feet on the ground? So both feet flat on the floor. Sit upright in a chair. Well, I put a cushion behind my back. So I'm on a chair up. with your feet on the floor. Feet on the floor. Yeah. Hands in the lap. Right. And I sit at a table, this table in this seat, right, with the candle in front of me, uh, about a foot or two in front of me. And just sit and stare. And there you go. Okay, really, really simple, really, really basic. I do it when I wake up in the morning because it's I get up early. It's I've been quiet. Really with the Wim Hof breathing because they say that we can create our own DMT, which is what will yeah. open our third yeah. eye. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you, you can, absolutely, you can. But um, I would start when I was looking at the candle with some deep breathing anyway. And using that focal point when you go within, and you, you see the candle flame. And it can be white, it can be yellow, 
or what tends to happen with me sometimes is it goes funky colors and it revolves around these funky colors you just don't worry about it just allow it to happen right but but try not to overthink what's going on just allow it and and as i say what happens is it, often nothing will happen in the meditation but i'll be walking down the road and then uh, you know i've got a voice app on my phone something will pin in my mind and i'll just go bam bam bam, bam and put it down and then i'll listen to it later and it can be gobbledygook but occasionally it's like that's a really good idea what am i going to have to do for this idea and then I, I i might be talking with someone and it will crop up again and then you go that way it's it's just every time i now listen to a certain different guided meditations it's like the answers are in it freaks me out the answers actually directly come through the meditation come very and, quickly right yeah and no but the, even when i listened to the other night and i was like this is bizarre and he was like i'd had a whole conversation with my friend about how you know, gases exchange happens in our lungs and it's like what we breathe out, which is waste. The trees will inhale and that's their life. So yeah. everything gets recycled. Yeah. And then later on, I was listening to this meditation and he went straight into something like that. And I was like, I had that full on conversation. And then from that stemmed an idea that literally popped out. And I was like, that's fantastic for work. So no, um, what's really interesting is when I put this together, um, I thought that the one part of this presentation that might cause the most interest no interest is the wrong word a resistance would be the meditation right no, because i've started since yeah, in right. September, but actually, so. you know you're all really engaged here listening to this meditation thing this discussion and it just shows you how important getting silent is was it blaise pascal who said that our problems stem from the fact that we can't sit still quietly with our thoughts. You know, we have to create distraction. We have to create noise. We have to create creating just to get away from being still and quiet because that's when our stories come in. That's when we, 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 we listen to that negativity. You know, we have to understand that that peace, that quiet, that gap, it allows that positive charge to come through us, allows that positive energy to come through us and gives us the opportunity to create I think, ideas. I think a key piece that you've given me tonight is I've gone in, which is so rewarding, but I feel like a piece that I was missing, it's like you knew what I needed to hear, which is obviously what brought me here. So I do believe totally. I know I was like, there's going to be a reason I need to listen to this. And it's like, I've been, I, I like to do my gratitude diary, but in the mornings I don't have time. So I've started doing that in the morning in the shower. So I say out loud what I'm thankful for really? and it comes in abundance now. So I'm like, right, that just factors in my busy life. And I know writing down's better, but I don't always have time in the morning. So do I'm what always works for you, right? You have to you do know. what works for you. But now what I haven't been doing is saying everything else out loud in abundance so that the universe can hear it as well. Because, you know, we say what we don't want out loud. Yeah. But I've been yet to potentially say out loud what is to come. Well, remember that words are energy and energy vibrates and it travels through time and space forever. So once you put it out there, it's out there. So you've got to be very careful what you say. You've got to be very yeah. careful what you think because thought waves are cosmic waves to penetrate all time space as well. Everything is interacting with the quantum field backwards and forwards. So but by saying that, for instance, I was munching on loads of peanuts just then, and you was like, say it out loud. Like, so I was like, right, the power in me is greater than the power trying to cause me to eat those peanuts. And then I was like, I'm trying this. But Harry Lee really wants to eat Amy. Don't worry about that. No, I was like, mate, I'm going to, I'm going to override this system because if this is, I do believe this is true because what I say to people when they want to lose weight, I'm like, stop focusing on the scale and what you, you don't, cause you're, you're going for the wrong. Once you stop worrying about the weight loss, that's when it happens. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much for that, Amy. Thanks for your input there. It's always uh, very much appreciated. Is there, and, and Janine, thank you. Let me know how that meditation goes. Will I you? will do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyone else, anything they want to say or add to this evening? Um, or you can type it if you want to type. Um, or if not, are you happy with um, where we're at? Yeah, let me just have a gulp of water. Well, I want to thank you all um, for joining me. As I say, this is the first uh, masterclass I've done of 2021. It's the first one I've done for a good while. And it's the first one I've done like this with these pure metaphysical principles. Um, so you've all been my guinea pigs. Um, and so I, I honor you, love you, and uh, thank you for putting up with me. As I say, I have recorded this. I'm going to stop the recording now, actually.